that is not about the facts. It's about using your brain. Okay, if you have a group of kids, okay, let me speak in parable for a little while. Say, for instance, if you like, if you like, hell, I don't know. If you have a scar on your face, you got a scar on your face. I got a scar on mine from fighting. You got a scar on your face. Say if you're hanging around a group of kids who sees another kid walking around, you know, going to class and say, hey dude, look at that ugly scar on your face. You're so nasty, look at the scar on your face. I mean, you got a scar on your face. Are you gonna hang out with those kids? That's what it seems like. It seems like to me that you're willing to ignore that a lot of people in your party, a lot of people that favor your party are prejudiced against black people. You being a half black man. You know, that's just mind-boggling to me. I don't understand how anybody could do that. I don't understand why anybody would stand with the ones who blatantly are not like. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the point by all the comments that Obama gets. You know, John McCain, Sarah Palin got. You know, Sarah Palin got sexist comments. You know. John McCain got old comments, but you know, I don't really think Barack Obama deserves to be called the N-word. Um, Muslim. I don't know. I don't. I, it's to me, it's really a simple, or a real simple thing. And one thing you got to understand, you also said something about not looking at race. You told me that um, you try not to look at race. They looking at race. I mean, you can try not, and I try not to, too. When I meet people, I have all kinds of friends, all kinds of colors. Trust me, I know all about all kinds of different cultures. I'm not a racist, but at the same time, the last thing I want to do is side with racist. Okay, I'm racist against racist. You know, if you're not a racist, I'm cool with you. But if you're a racist, I'm not down with you. I'm not down with anything that's got to do with you. I tell you. So, you need to really do some soul searching on that, man. And I'm a freedom fighter, okay? I like the underdog. I like, just like Martin Luther King and Barack Obama, I like, I like to see when people help out their own people or people less fortunate than them. Okay, and then you know this is spreading the wealth thing. They're trying to get Obama da 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 this and da da da. And then when you do that, you you throw. Okay, here's another good example. Go to break.com. Look at any video where a black man is doing something stupid. Look at all the comments you'll see about monkey this and nigger that and that's black people this and black people that. Go and read one. I challenge you. Go to break.com and search for anything that a, a black man had done and made a stupid mistake. White people done the same mistakes, but you don't see a bunch of racist comments about that. You go to break.com, look up a, a video, any video that black people, a black person turned around and done something stupid, and read all the racist comments. You're going to tell me that, that you try not to look at race, what they do? It's, to me, it's like you're setting yourself up for failure when it comes to, you know, discrimination against you. I mean, don't you realize people are going to discriminate against you? And most of most of the time, they're not liberal people. Because liberal, to me, liberal people have a more open mind about things. Look, I can go on and on about this, but, you know, your little facts are irrelevant because that's not the point. Again, I'll say, it's all about common sense, bro. You talk about the, uh, the illegal immigrants. Um, I don't know. It's the same thing with them. I can't help but to, to feel that people not, don't hate them just because they're illegal. They do this, do that. They don't like them because they're Mexican. I grew up in North Carolina. I know prejudiced people. Hell, 60% of the people uh, in my school were, were, were rednecks. And it just probably lets you know the reason why I feel the way I feel. Um, might be a part two. Um, when I was in school, um, 
Uh, I went to Western Elements High School, uh, North Carolina and Elon. Um, I'm not ashamed to tell anybody that. Um, in ways I'm proud of the school I went to, in ways I'm not. But anyway, some some of the uh, alumni might remember this. Um, there was a couple at Western. Um, it was a black guy and a white girl. Um, both of them very popular. Both of them very ahead, high. You know, made good grades and played sports, very popular. So um, they were having trouble with um, their parents, you know, accepting, you know, their race and relations or whatever. But um, one day they had a little fight, you know, it was a little, just a little, he didn't hit her, but, you know, they were screaming and, you know, she was mad and hitting him and, you know, just kind of ignoring him, whatever. And it just went on in front of the whole student body. Well, when I got the class and several other classes, there were so many white students talking about, oh, that's why black and white couples will never work. That's why it should never be. That it's something totally irrelevant. But this is how they think. This is what I see. This is how. This is what I grew up with. This is. I mean, I'm sitting in class and they're talking about how, you know, black people and white people shouldn't be together. And this not not only was the students, it was some of the teachers too, because I found out through some of the black teachers and some of the white, just white teachers were saying the same thing, and they were letting it go on, so then when I get to art class, we finally have a discussion about the whole thing, and then, you know, they try to tell me, okay, well, white, we're just different, we shouldn't be together, da da da, I mean, this is how people think, it exists in this world, prejudice stuff exists in this world, and I'll tell you another I'll tell you another, I'll make another point with you. In 2000, no, it was, ni it was 1996 when, um, when Clinton and Bob Dole was going to be reelected. We was in history class and um, we were sitting around at a table and um, uh, one of our history teachers went around asking us, you know, who, who do we, who would we vote for? And some most some of the people said they vote for Clinton, including some of the whites. But the major and and you know, of course, all the black people did. But some of the whites did. The majority of the whites sitting at the table was like, I'm voting for Bob Dole. Da da da. But, but for what reason? Bill Clinton was doing at that time. But those before Lewinsky was doing a good job. And then there was just one girl. She was so adamant about, well, Bob, Bill Clinton, this, Bob Dole, this. I'm voting for Bob Dole. I'm voting for Bob Dole. Three days later, that same girl called me a nigger. Yeah, that's true. Wake up, man. That's the only thing I'm trying to ask you, get you to see. Wake up. There's prejudiced people in this world. And they don't like Obamas. They don't like Jesse Jacksons. They don't like Martin Luther Kings. I don't care what they say. They don't like people like you. They don't like people like me. And I am not going to stand with them on any issue. And that's all I got to say. Because I'm, I'm not going to be ignorant. Now, you can call me uneducated. You can call me whatever you want to. But any name that, any name that you have called me it doesn't really fit my description. Because I'm not a racist person. Anybody who really knows me will let you know and will tell you that. So, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm done. I hope this appeases. Thank you. No matter cane or cream, it's those tiny little.